It's our favorite time of year, fall. It's brisk. It's that time of year when you can't decide what to do because there's so many great opportunities. But today, we decided to head to the river and enjoy some of the great concentrations of fish that are starting to pile up in these wintering holes. I'm with my good friend, Dan Quinn, and we're gonna go start out on some crappies, I think. There's a good hole right out here, and then we're gonna head to a spot where it sounds like there's a bunch of everything. That's, to put it lightly, everything. Everything that eats shad will be in these these deep holes and these high spots where it's it's a massive concentration of fish and they're all feeding on shad so you've got bass you've got catfish you've got buffalo which are super cool and and huge i mean you never know what you're going to catch it's a different species every cast and and it's a blast all right i'm looking forward to it. we're going to catch a bunch of fish today today is all about fall consolidation Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There we go. Wow, that feels like a good fish, Dano. Ooh. Nice. I'm going to spot lock us. There's so oh, many fish. You're doubled oh. up. Whoa, we got oh, two got big a... fish on. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what to do? How do you like this? Dan and I are an adventure for fall consolidation of all kinds of different critters. We're on a river that has just about every conceivable type of fish you can imagine in it. <laughs> and neither of us know what the heck we've got on. Oh, Dan's came off. I do have a net. Of course, it's buried underneath tackle boxes and everything else, Dan, but I have a buffalo. Cool. And this is what we're most excited about. This actually is not the big mouth buffalo that get to be really huge. I'm not quite sure if this is a small mouth or a black, but a very, very cool critter nonetheless. How do you like that, Dano? Well done, Jer. These small mouth and black buffalo are the ones that they value the most for food, and you can kind of tell the difference. Now I'm no buffalo expert, but the big mouths will have a terminal mouth, meaning the mouth comes out the end. And then these other ones like this have that more sucker mouth. They're actually a sucker. And these are a native fish to this part of the world. A lot of people bow harvest them, but these can be quite old. And they can be, uh, they're, they're a great fish. They're native, they should be here. And they're beautiful and sporty. I'm gonna get this guy back. There we go. Wow, that fish bit it. I was suspended that time. I was like a foot off the bottom. I was just jigging it vertically. And the fish, boom, just came up and put slack in the line. Not a huge fish, whatever it is. I got this, it's like right under the trolling motor. No, it's another buffalo. The thing hit it suspended. Now this is the big mouth that we're talking about right here. Cool. They're just a little tricky to hand land. The net is, is handy for them. This fish actually bit, it was like two feet off the bottom and he cracked it. Woohoo! I'm digging Nicely it. Nicely done, Jerry. digging it. He's off, and I'll show you. Now these things, this is so cool, but these critters can actually get to be, I believe the Wisconsin state record is actually 76 pounds, and it was only caught like in the last five or six years. So imagine catching fish like this that could be 70 pounds. Isn't that crazy? Look at that mouth. So see the difference between the, that first one we caught and this one? A little different mouth shape. Beautiful. Super fun, man. These are really hard fish to catch, generally speaking, but they're eating hard baits. Buffalo on hard baits. I can't believe it. Let me get it back and we're going to get another one. Whoa. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. Just a little buffalo. Wow. Boy, that's probably the smallest one I've ever seen. I guess I can return the Look camera at that here, mouth. bud. <laughs> what a cool critter. There you be, buddy. Cool. I'll Head take away. him. I'll break the ice. Boy, they get a lot bigger than this. There we go. Vertical again. I, every time I go to hit spot lock, because we slow down for a second, 
That one just pounded. I was vertically jigging. It was like a foot off the bottom. Oh, that thing oh just crushed it. Yeah, nice little guy. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, a lot of the, you know, you, you hear about buffalo getting caught sometimes on a jig in a minnow. Every once in a while you hear about them getting caught on a, on a grub, something like that. Some guys I know fly fishing, but most of the buffalo are taken with a bow and arrow. So to be able to have a, a bite like this where they're eating hard baits is one of the more unique things I've run across in fishing. Pretty cool. Big rivers can hold large populations of a lot of different fish species, way more than any lake, pit, pond, or most reservoirs. The carrying capacity of a river is just immense. They can be narrow in comparison to a lake, but the length makes up for it in volume. Take for example the Mississippi River. It's roughly 2,300 miles in length, and there are at least 260 different species of fish that swim in it. 25% of all fish species in North America live in this one body of water. And if there's a good time to chase a big number of these species of fish, it's fall when they start consolidating together. Deep holes with moderate current seem to be a fish attractor in any river system in the, in the fall. And you can see right here, this is a classic spot. We've got a downstream hole and an upstream hole. And the active fish generally sit on the upstream side. Now I just want to show you with the fish finder here, sonar, how many fish are actually in this spot. You can see we're rolling through right now. This is all shad, just an immense school of shad. And you can see underneath on the down imaging, some larger fish as well. But this is just a remarkable concentration of fish that have shown up on this spot. Now, once they start showing up, generally when you see the water temperatures start to come off a summer peak and start falling, these fish will show up. And a lot of times, once you hit the, the mid 50s, those fish are, stay, are there to stay for the rest of, rest of the year. But this is, this is an interference. This isn't plankton. This is all food. Can you believe that? It's hard for the sonar to even read, whether it's this mega imaging or through the traditional 2D, to even read what's underneath it because the density of fish is so massive. And that's why we're catching so many different species of fish. But look at it, classic spot, big point, deep hole, deep hole. Fish are certainly winning around here and that current's just pushing right up against the face of this. And the bait are all in here. And typically, like I said, the active fish will be on the upstream side. But you gotta fish it both because sometimes there's fish on either side of something like this. Oh, Dan. Dan. Oh, what do I have Talk to me here? there, friend. Oh, Jared. Are you, do you have the real thing on? Boy, I don't know. It might just be a small to medium-sized buffalo. That's what, that is like half of the fun of this is you just have no idea what you're going to get. Oh, yeah. That is nuts. They're just crushing that bait. Look at that. Yeah. They love jigging rafts. There's something. Who would have ever thunk that the hottest bait going for buffalo would have been jigging wraps? <laughs> Dan and I have a, a couple different setups. We're both fishing with the same equipment. Really what you're looking for with a rod in a reel is you're looking for that six foot eight to seven foot, something that's got a medium power or fast or an extra fast tip. You don't want to go medium light because it doesn't get the hooks in. You want that really fast tip, which you can see on here. And now in terms of line, it's really a personal preference, but I feel that monofilament is a better performing line for jigging wrapping or the snap jigging technique than braid is. However, it's a, it's a personal preference deal. So on this one, I've got a, a mono that almost fishes somewhat similar to a braid. This is Suffolk's Advance. And this stuff is nuts. I've got six pound line on here. And I've caught, I've caught a zillion fish on this spool this spring. Al and I were out in South Dakota and I can't tell you how many big carp, buffalo, walleye, smallmouth, you name it, were caught on this same spool of line. And it's six pound test, and I guarantee you if this is one of those 50, 60 pound fish, I'll be able to land it on six pound line because it's tough, and I've got it on a reel. This is a diode ballistic that you just can't break the line because the drag is so smooth. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors.
no doubt my favorite time of year. I like, I like cold water, both spring and fall. It's an amazing time of year to, to fish. But this fall bite, I mean, both times of year, cold water, generally you have concentrations of fish. Pre-spawn fish staging, you get a new pile of fish and it's shallow and it's exciting, but again in the fall, it's the same type of program. You get into these big concentrations of fish it's unreal. I just want you to take a peek at this. I'm not going to net it, but look at this. How many times you see buffalo that are hooked in the mouth? Unreal. This is kind of handy with these sharp little tiny hooks to have a longer pliers to just reach in and pop it out. It's anywhere, the river, you know, just like rivers everywhere where they neck down or where there's deep water holes and where the food groups up is where everything else groups up. Right. And they're just great spots to fish and just go fishing. For the exactly. Jig and catch everything. Of course, fishing lures are just simply tools to get the job done. Now, fishing in this deep water like we're fishing in, we're fishing, you know, 20 to 30 feet, generally speaking. And the jigging wrap is just one of those reaction baits and everything bites it. I'm talking white bass, obviously buffalo bite it, catfish bite it, walleyes of course love it. We've ca I've caught muskies on them, caught everything I can consider on this. However, not one lure works in all situations. The jigging wrap happens to be our favorite, but a lot of times guys coming through with a jig and a minnow, you can kill tons of fish. A jig and a plastic is another, another great option, but generally speaking in this deeper, these deeper situations, a heavier bait, that can get to the bottom quickly when the fish are schooled up like this is, is totally the ticket. And for Dan and I, it's a jigging wrap. It's a bait I never, ever, ever go fishing without because it always catches fish and it catches everything. Yeah, the reactionary element of the jigging wrap is vital, especially when you have acres of bait, just stacked shad, just acres of it. You need something different. You know, they can open their mouth and shad swim in more or less, but a, a reaction bite it, it triggers the fish, they react. It's like a natural instinct to just eat it and engulf it, and that's exactly what a jigging wrap does, and that's what's been working today. And, and in, in a lot of these situations, when you have a lot of food, a lot of natural food, it's tough to compete with, but a jigging wrap is absolutely one of the best tools to do that and catch a lot of fish. I mean, you look at like when it gets to be really tough conditions, say, you know, it's Middle, middle, oh, just missed one. Middle of July, hot, calm, sunny. A lot of guys are dragging around for walleye, say a, a jig or a, a lindy rig and a, and a leech type of a deal. A lot of times when those fish are really negative or not willing to, to commit to baits, something that moves fast or shoots right in front of their face can get that reaction bite. And that's what Dan's talking about. These fish here aren't necessarily hungry. There's so much food, but this bait just comes crashing in front of them and they just pin it to the bottom and it's just nuts how good it is. I think if we fish through here with live bait, a jig and a minnow, a jig and a crawler, something like that, I bet we'd probably be catching a tenth of the fish because I know there's guys next to us that are fishing with live bait and we're catching probably more fish. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> Feels like something big. Yes. We were just commenting we hadn't caught a fish in like two minutes, so it was like, what's going on here? <laughs> I hope this is one of those big dogs. And right now it's feeling like it. It's looking like it. <laughs> I'm just relaxed. We're catching so many fish. It's just one after the other. The cool part about, you know, exploring rivers, rivers can be intimidating to a lot of people. Of course, they're dynamic. Water levels fluctuate. Oh, we doubled up again. Water levels Dang, fluctuate. Oh, lost them. And water color fluctuates, but oh, I lost mine too. Darn it. One thing about these fall wintering spots, whether you're talking walleyes, muskies, smallmouth, buffalo like this, they hold true almost every year, regardless of water level or water conditions. Fish might move a little bit, but Whoa. they generally will be in those same areas every year. So once you find it, you're in business. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Boy, is this is something really, you want to go? Do you want to? This fish is really testing the you equipment. You want to go to travel to go get this one? No, I mean I think I can get them. You just keep fishing. I'll, I may need assistance. I'll, I will gladly net this fish for you. I want to see one of these buffalo the size of the channel marker cans here. This this could be him that day. 
But it's just so fun to come to rivers and just catch fish. It is, you know, the Mississippi flows through my hometown of Brainerd and where, where Dan grew up. And the river's a lot smaller up there than it is, you know, obviously the further, further south you go. But the idea is the same when it comes to finding river fish. So while Dan's fighting this fish in, let's share with you how we go about finding the best spots to find lots of fish in the fall. Fall is a time of consolidation, especially in rivers. Fish can often move great distances from their summer homes for stable spots to spend the winter. Miles of river and large areas can be void of life, yet tiny little honey holes can hold unbelievable numbers of fish. A common characteristic we've observed in wintering holes is moderate depth and moderate current flow. Big slack water pools or the deepest holes often seem the most likely spots and they can hold fish. However, some of the best spots we've found aren't always so obvious. Key locations to begin the search are barriers, bends, islands, points. In some cases, searching with electronics can tell you quickly if fish are there. In other cases, you gotta fish the spots to know, especially in small rivers. It's worth spending time and effort to find these spots because year after year, they'll hold fish. Boy, he really gave me a workout. They are so tough. Catfish are so underrated. They're strong, amazing sport fish. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You know, the story of the jig and wrap is, is super interesting in the sense that it started out as an ice fishing lure and was that for, for many years, you know, 50 years ago. It's been a staple in the ice fishing belts all across the world and it was Al figuring out how to use them in open water for walleyes that has transpired into the most unbelievable thing as a year-round lure. It is just so cool. It's one of our best-selling lures because it works for so many species in so many situations in open water and hard water. Um, and even, even, even in the last couple of weeks, almost every walleye tournament I've, I've checked out, it's been one with a jigging wrap. And it's absolutely absolutely remarkable um, the effectiveness and the versatility of it for walleyes but as we've seen here today a multitude of species I mean it is absolutely much more than a walleye lure but it's it's cool it's coming from an ice fishing lure that's been around for 50 years to see where it is today is is pretty cool Rappel is pretty proud of this lure this is what we're looking for buddy He's, he's kind of going this way. Get my line out of your oh, way. I saw him. Oh, he's going to that buoy. No, nope, now we're good. We're good. This is what we were oh. looking for. Wow, Dan, this is totally what we were after. <laughs> a little rain squall was headed our way. And boom. Oh, you got a common carp. Another species. Is it? It's a common carp. No kidding. Unbelievable. Look at that. Big one, and he ate it. He did eat it. It's a big carp, too. Wow, look at that. How about that, dude? Sweet. Holy smokes. There you go. There, there we go. Ah, a carp, wow. The man. <laughs> Cool. I feel like Dan the man Fought is hard. so fitting. Yes, jig and wraps catch everything. That they do. Pretty cool. Absolutely. Oh, there we go. Big, big fish here. Ooh, dear. <laughs> this is a big, big honking fish. This might be a sturgeon, but, but I don't know. It's just a giant fish. I wonder if it's a buffalo the size of that channel marker. Look at this, just thumping. I think I got myself a sturge. If I were to guess, I would say sturgeon. 
That would be pretty cool. What a fun day of fishing. Nothing can quite compete with the excitement of setting the hook and not knowing what species you're gonna catch. It could be a sauger, walleye, crappie, carp, channel catfish, gizzard shad, smallmouth, drum, buffalo, or even a gigantic flathead catfish. Pretty good. Oh, look at the size of this thing going, huh? Look at that. <laughs> you wanna have an awesome time catching tons of fish? Make sure to get out and enjoy the rivers in the fall. It's a time of consolidation and a time when you can catch some massive, massive critters. Woo! And when that water temperature starts dropping in the river, the fish pile up like cordwood, and it can be some of the best multi-species fishing you will ever encounter. Oh, there he is. Dude, that is a, a little big better fish. one, huh? That's a sweet fish. Cool. And it's cool. They're just you know? amazing looking critters. And they're beautiful in their own way, right? They really are. Look at the mouth on that guy. You know, there's just so many different species you can go fish for, and fish that are aggressive and they get this big, pull that hard, boy, sign me up. Ooh, there he goes. Hey, you know, all of us at one point in our life have seen, heard, or read something that burned into our heart and became real to us. Many, many years ago, I read a little piece of a strip of paper like this, and I cut it out and I put it, it's on my mirror in my bathroom, and I look at it every single day. What it simply says is your work is a portrait of you. Autograph it with excellence. Can I say that again? Your work is a portrait of you. Autograph it with excellence. That burned into my heart, it became real to me. Every day, every project I'm on, I look at this, excellence, excellence, excellence. And when I think about that, there's a scripture, and like there is for everything, it's in Matthew 5, 16. Real simple, it reinforces what I just said. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is one of those things in life that I'll never forget. That scripture and that little, little word, your work is a portrait of you autograph it with excellence. Something to think about this week. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.